We know that ransomware is gaining pace as well as sophistication. What exactly is ransomware? That's an essential question, I guess. And, and why has it become such an issue for businesses? Yeah, definitely, it's an, it's an essential question. And thanks for having me on. So look, ransomware is one of those things that uh, when I started in cybersecurity 17, 18 years ago, you know, you hardly ever heard of it. Uh, but now not a day goes by without hearing about a ransomware attack on, 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 on many different types of organizations. Ransomware, basically, J Jackson, ransomware is a malicious piece of software that controls or restricts access to files and will only release that information once you pay a ransom. Okay, so that typically that ransom used to be in the hundreds, then went to thousands. We're now seeing ransoms paid in the millions. So it's definitely a huge issue right now. Yeah, absolutely it is. Exactly how has the threat though evolved and changed in recent years? Yeah, it's great. So, so, so look, I, I, I've seen ransomware evolve from something that was quite um, low level. It attacked mainly financial services and, and, and hospitals. Ransomware now, you know, the ransomware operators now are, are less concerned about industries. They're more concerned about scale. How can they get their biggest bang for buck? And for me, the way ransomware has evolved is has been in a couple of areas, Jackson. I mean, if you think about traditional ransomware, when you encrypt data and you lock data, it, it, it impacts what we call the availability of that data. Okay, and that's how ransomware has typically been. You know, it's it's the availability aspect. Recent ransomware attacks have been so large, you know, we're seeing the, these ransomware gangs almost operate like cartels. You know, they're getting they're collaborating more and more each with each other, they're offering ransomware as a service. So imagine selling your viruses to affiliates or syndicates for them to use against their target. So we're noticing that ransomware gangs are becoming more and more um, savvy, more and more targeted. Um, you know, a lot of them are operating what we call big game hunting methodologies. So instead of doing a large number of cyber attacks or ransomware attacks on small organizations, what they're doing is they're really targeting, you know, who are we going to go for? Who is going to give us the biggest bang for our buck? Where are we going to get the most for our money? I think ransomware itself has also evolved. You know, it's we're seeing more and more sophisticated types of ransomware that go undetected. Uh, the encryption algorithms are becoming more and more advanced. You know, Jackson, just to give you a few figures, you know, we now have more than 20 prominent ransomware global gangs operating who made more than 18 to 20 billion dollars in 2020 yeah? and that's that's more, more that, that's six sixty percent more than it was in 2019 so the problem isn't going to go away unfortunately why do you believe that hackers are actually becoming more daring more brazen because as, as you point out in recent weeks there have been major ransomware attacks in the us targeting you know meat supplies and fuel yeah look so i think i think there's two it's a great question there's there's two ways i can answer it i think firstly Hackers are becoming more and more, they're taking the time more to understand where their targets are, you know, who's got the most to lose, um, where are they going in the next couple of years. So I don't think they just attack indiscriminately all the time. They do their research, okay? I think the second thing I would say is that, you know, cyber attack, they're becoming more and more sophisticated in terms of the techniques they use in the way that they're working with each other. You know, um, we're seeing more and more sophisticated types of ransomware coming out each and every day. We're seeing ransomware as a service now being offered almost as a business. We're seeing, um, you know, we, we, we're seeing ransomware go, go undetected for weeks and months. You know, certain ransomware, Jackson, will actually counteract traditional antivirus defenses. So imagine if a firm has already got certain defenses in place, ransomware will actually counteract that. In some cases, switch those defenses off. Also, think about the types of organizations, Jackson, that have been attacked. You know, we've had Microsoft, we've had SolarWinds, we've had governments. These are not small organizations. These are organizations which have a high level of cyber sophistication in place. And the question that clients always ask is, if those guys and girls are being attacked, what's happening to us? How do we know we're not being attacked right now? So that's why I say daring because of the types of organizations that are being attacked. Yeah. Okay. So what are the, what are some of the things that businesses actually can be doing and what should they be considering um, to actually become better prepared to tackle ransomware? So, so traditionally when I used to talk to clients, it was always around the technical aspects. So make sure that, you know, you're, you're patching your environments, 
you've got, you've got vulnerability scanning in place, making sure you're hardening your configurations. I think now ransomware and certainly cybersecurity is more of, more of a people issue, Jackson. It's around culture and training. You know, uh, so for example, you know, with ransomware, there was a survey done by a company called Proofpoint in 2020. You know, they said, Jackson, that a third of working adults still don't know what ransomware is. Okay, and, and this comes this comes down to mindset and awareness. If you don't know what ransom, ransomware is, you're less inclined to look out for it. So the first step is what companies need to be doing is really training their employees, getting the mindsets right, improving what we call cultural resilience. The second thing I would always say is, you know, identify your key assets, identify what it is you need to protect. So think about the way ransomware works. The operators will know what data and systems you have. They will know what they need to lock. The question I always, I always ask companies is, do you know what you need to protect? Because a lot of companies don't actually know what their critical data is. So whether it's uh, personal data or it's something around research or development, identify your, your personal data. And the last thing I would say is, and, and I'm, apologies, I can only limit it to three right now because of time, is go through that incident response process for ransomware. So one of the things I did for a police um, constabulary here in the UK a few years ago is we gave them a fictitious ransomware attack. And we got everyone around the table and we said, right, you, you know, you've got a ransomware attack. How do you actually deal with it? And we looked at what, you know, how they would interact, what systems they would go on, how they would deal with the press and the media. So that's a huge thing in ransomware attacks is, you know, how do we deal with legal counsel? How do we word it to the press and media? So actually going through that incident response process um, before the real thing happens, I think is, is one of the biggest payoffs you can, you'll see. Yeah, do you have any advice for businesses on how they can negotiate with ransomware hackers? Because I guess even if the ransom is paid, is there a guarantee that businesses will still be able to, to regain access to their files? So Jackson, in 2019, not 2020, 2019, 25 percent of companies that had a ransomware attack actually paid the ransom. But you know what? Only 8 percent of those companies actually got their data back. So, that the, you know, the, the, the saying is, you know, paying a ransom doesn't pay off all the time. Yeah, so that we've got to put that in mind. And once the ransom is paid, there's no guarantee that you're not going to be attacked again. So my, my, my suggestion is to try and not pay the ransom. I know certain countries now are putting protocols in place which almost make it illegal for you to um, negotiate or barter with the ransomware operator. So it's a very difficult pill to swallow right now. I know with the pipeline attack that was a few weeks ago, I know there are, there were um, some news of them actually paying a ransom. I guess Jackson, it comes down to what 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 you care about the most. If you're if you're business critical and you're going to be using a couple of million dollars every hour, you really need to decide what's important for you. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to pay the ransom, but you know different organizations will will have different priorities. Okay, is there any advice you have for employees who who I guess may be feeling vulnerable right now given they are working from home. I guess um, some important advice would be not to give out your personal information to, you know, when responding to unsolicited, um, you know, yes. emails or, or messages. Yeah, that's a great, great question. So I think, look, the pandemic and the whole working from home environment has really increased what we call the threat landscape. My advice would be is, is to remain vigilant and remain aware. You know, global ransomware attacks, Jackson, actually start by one person just clicking on a link and downloading a piece of ransomware. So my, 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 my counsel would be always question, if you've got an email um, asking for your bank details, asking for your personal details or your password, you, know, you need to be able to validate that and question that. And if it seems suspicious, talk to your manager, talk to the IT team, you know, even phone the company up to, to verify, is it, you that, is it you that actually called me or left me this email? So I think it's around vigilance and awareness and question, you know, feel free to question your colleagues is this something that we should be clicking on? Is this a, is this site, does it seem legitimate? So it all starts with the human. It all starts with the user. Don't give your personal details out unless you know, you're, you're, you've actually verified the source.